Welcome. This is an Innovations Technology Solutions video, and it goes along with the blog post, Writing Better Shell Scripts, Part 3. After watching this video, please have a look at the rest of the resources at www.innovationsts.com. Your shell script has little to no chance of running securely if it trusts the environment that it runs in and that environment has been compromised. You can help protect your script from unintended behavior by not trusting items like environment variables. Whenever possible, assume that input from the external environment has been designed to cause your script problems. The path variable is a common source of security holes in scripts. Two of the most common issues are the inclusion of the current directory via the dot or period character here uh, and using a path variable that's been manipulated by a cracker. The reason that you don't want the current directory included in the path is that a malicious version of a command like ls could be placed in your current directory. The order of the directories in the path variable makes a difference. This is important because if a cracker has write access to a directory that's earlier in the search order, like your current directory, they may preempt the standard directories like bin and user bin that may be harder for them to gain access to. When you try to run the standard command, the malicious version will be found first and run instead. All the cracker has to do is insert a replacement command earlier in the search order. The second main problem with the path environment variable is that it could have been manipulated by a cracker before or as your script was run. If this happens, the cracker could point your script to a directory that they created which holds modified versions of system utilities that your script relies on. Knowing this, it's best if you add code to the top of your script to set the path variable to a minimal value that your script needs to run. You can save the original path variable and restore it on exit. The next script shows the first script with the current directory removed from the path variable and a minimal path set to lessen chances of problems. The minimal path is set here. The original path is saved here in the old path variable. And down at the bottom of the script, the original path is restored from the old path variable. In your own scripts, it would probably be best to put the reset of the path variable inside of the trap on the exit condition. That way, path gets reset to the original value even if your script is terminated early. I wrote about traps in the last post in this series on error handling. Now that we have a minimal and known path variable set, we can feel a little bit better about running the ls pipe wc l command, which is right here. The next step is to deal with the user input. This next script reflects these changes. I'm first going to put quotes around the variable which is here uh, to help ensure that it's treated as a string and not part of the statement. Also just after the read line I'm going to scrub the input which is this whole line here is doing the scrubbing uh, to make sure that there aren't any inappropriate characters contained within it. So this section takes the user input using the read command, which is up here, and then that is piped directly into, uh, from echo, directly into the tr command here. The tr commands dash c and dash d options are used to cause TR to look for and delete the unmatched characters. So anything that's not an alphanumeric character uh, via the alnum class here or the newline character here uh, will be deleted. <clears throat> it's not hard to adapt the TR statement to your situation, maybe even replacing characters instead of deleting them. We also don't want to store any password information in a script unless we have to. 
which is what I've done here. If it becomes necessary to store a password inside a script, it's best to encrypt the password using a command like md5sum. Think about this decision carefully because it's almost always there's almost always a way to avoid a pass using a password inside of a script. For the purpose of this example, I've decided to leave the password in the file and use md5sum to encrypt it. This next script here shows the results of adding password encryption. You can see that I've echoed the user input string, which is the statement here, into md5sum here, and then made sure that uh, we only grab the password hash part of the output, which is this cut statement here. Then that's compared to previously stored password hash, which is this here, uh, to see if the user entered the correct password. Notice that the password is never decrypted. Next, we start getting into the temporary file section of the script. I had a function for this in the last blog post, but we'll write the function from scratch here, applying what we've learned so far. The next script here uh, shows the new function and its implementation within the script. Within the create temp function, which is here, uh, I use the temp files array, which we created at the beginning of the script, to hold the file names and paths of the temporary files that I create. That way I can remove them later when the script is finished. Normally I would add a trap to handle this, which I talked about in the last blog post on error handling. I left the trap out of the script just to keep the example a little bit shorter. When the create temp function is called, the, fir the script first checks to see if the user has their own temp directory, which is this check here. If they do, it is used in preference to the main forward slash tmp directory, uh, which is referenced here. Uh, and the reason for this is because the forward slash tmp directory is world writable. Once the temp folder has been selected, it's passed to the make temp command using the temp dir option, which is this option right here. Make temp creates the temp file, and the path name of that file is create that is created is stored in a variable, and that variable that it's stored in is temp underscore file right here. According to our error handling knowledge, I should be checking to make sure that the temp file was created and that there were no errors, but I've left this check out to keep the script more streamlined. In your own use of the script code, you want to apply the error handling techniques that we talked about in the last post. The path and file name that's stored in the variable is then added to the temp files array, which is done with this statement right here. To, deal, uh, to be dealt with later. Once that's done, the temp file is ready for use. Normally, I would redirect data into the temp file, but I've just echoed the path and name of the temp file instead, which I've done here by accessing the uh, first element of the temp files array. The last thing that I do is to restore the path variable using the saved value of the old path variable which is this last statement here. This undoes the change that we made at the beginning of the script which helped us run system commands more safely. There are still improvements that can be made to this script based on what has been discussed in this and previous posts. Please add your ideas about the script in the comments section of this post. This has been an Innovations Technology Solutions video. Please leave any thoughts or questions that you have in the comments section of this post. I'd like to hear what you say, what you have to say. Also, remember to check out the rest of the posts in this series. Thanks for watching.